Hey everyone, it's Ethan here from thetinyhouse.net and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how to find the right heater for your tiny house. It's a question that I get a lot and there are a number of different kind of elements that I'll talk about in this video, but the first thing I want to talk about is just figuring out is the heater going to be powerful enough for your house. And so luckily you don't have to guess because you can actually use a um, one of many free online calculators um, called a BTU calculator. A BTU is a unit of heat and it is commonly used in the heating and cooling industry. So most heaters are rated in BTUs, which stands for British Thermal Unit, in case you were wondering. And so um, I just searched Google for BTU calculator and I actually found two of them. And um, the reason that I'm going to use two is because I want to show you that this isn't an exact science. So um, you might want to use a couple of different calculators and see what the numbers are before you choose a heater for your house. So I'll plug in the numbers for my house, um, 7 feet wide, 20 feet long, and I'm going to put a ceiling height of 12. My insulation, you know, I have very good insulation, but I have a lot of windows, so I'm going to say normal. And then temperature to increase, so depending on your local winters, so I'm going to say 75. I'm in Vermont, and I probably have a pretty similar, if not colder, winter than Boston. So we'll hit Calculate. And so um, on the coldest of days, so say it's negative 20 degrees, I would need 23,000 BTUs per hour of heat in order to heat the house. Now that's a much higher number than the heater that I'm planning on getting for my house. Um, but I would say that for the most part, most of the time, I'm not going to need a 75 degree temperature increase. I'm probably only going to need a 50 degree temperature increase. So let's see what, what for instance, 50 would, would give me. So that's 15,000 BTUs, more in the range of what I'd be using. So let's go over to this other calculator because it actually has some additional kind of dynamics. Number of exterior walls in the room. So I have actually four exterior walls, but we'll say three. Same dimensions. Um, measured my door, that's 20 square feet, um, and then my total window area in square feet um, is actually 37. I actually kind of guesstimated this. Um, is there a fireplace in the room? No. And Let's see what they say. So they're saying 9,300 BTU hour uh, required to feed, heat my room, which is obviously a much lower number than the other calculator. So you really have to kind of take an average. You know, I would say that for my house, I would want somewhere between 9,000 on the low end and 20,000 on the high end. Now, um, keep in mind, this is a number for the absolute coldest day. So I would say that a heater with, with between 12 and 18,000 BTUs would probably be good for my tiny house. I suppose I could always supplement with electric heat. Um, with a small space heater on a really cold, you know, negative 30 degree day where my main heater just isn't, isn't doing it. So now that we've figured out how many BTUs we need, I'll show you a little bit how I do online research about heaters. And for this example, I've pulled up a few different heater options uh, for tiny houses. Um, and depending on when you watch this, um, at this point I have abandoned my Dickinson Newport um, propane heater. Um, it has never been able to heat my tiny house properly and most of all it's never been able to vent properly. Um, it's a long story which I will tell in another blog post but I am currently on the market for a new heater so I'm actually going to buy one of these. Now before we talk about what to look for, I want to show you what you should avoid at all costs and that is a vent free heater. Um, I know these are tempting because they're very powerful 10,000 BTUs for $187 this runs on propane. Um, the problem with a vent free heater is that tiny houses because they're new construction and because they tend to be well insulated are very tight structures so not a lot of fresh air can get in or out of them and so burning a propane appliance like this in your house will not only create a lot of condensation, but it will also deplete your inside oxygen in your house and create carbon monoxide, which uh, is not what you want. So um, I would suggest avoiding a vent-free heater 
Um, I know the factor of price is literally you add another zero for the, the direct vent propane heaters. There's, there's a bit more to them, um, but unfortunately vent free heaters are just not safe for tiny houses. You know, they're more meant for a garage or for a shed or, you know, some structure that is not so airtight as a tiny house. So now I'll pull up a, a heater that I'm a big fan of, which is the Mini Franklin from Woodstock Soapstone. And what's cool about this stove is that it is, it runs on propane, but it looks like a wood stove. And it's got that nice thermal mass of the, um, the soapstone and the cast iron. So that thing really heats up and it keeps you warm. And so right here on the page for the stove, I'm seeing that it's 8,000 BTUs. So that's, that's really the first thing that you're going to look for when you're shopping is does the unit produce enough BTUs for your application? And I would suggest if, if you figure that you need 12,000 BTUs, get a stove that can do more than 12,000 BTUs. So that way it's not running all the time. But um, moving on, the other thing that you should be looking for are what's called clearances. And clearances are how much space is required on, you know, below the stove, behind the stove, next to the stove, and on top of the stove. Because that's really, that differs a lot depending on what unit you buy, and that will help inform where in your tiny house it can go and how much space it's going to take up in your tiny house. And so for this unit, you know, first I'll just scan the page and see if it says. So it, it says it right down here, side clearance, two inches. And that's actually quite low. That's great. So that means you can have this thing two inches away from an intersecting wall. Corner clearance of 1.5. So above it, you need 12 inches of space. Behind it, you need two inches. And in front, so the front is where most of the heat seems to be coming out. That's going to be 20 inches. So I really like this heater, but not sure if it's for me. I'm not sure if it would be powerful enough for my house. And that brings me to the Williams High Efficiency Direct Vent Furnace. Um, I've been looking at these for a while, and I do think this is the one that I'm going to go with. Um, and what's great about this is that it um, the unit that I'm going to get or that I'm looking at is 17,700 BTUs, which is right kind of in that sweet spot for me of, of power to size. And um, the other thing that's great about it is the clearances. So again, I'll go down here um, and look for what the clearances are. I can see the dimensions, but you know, here we go. Here are the clearances. So again, two inches to an intersecting wall. 10 inches from the top of the furnace to the ceiling or overhang, a quarter inch to the back wall, and two inches to the floor. So that's really fantastic. That's, that's really nice and compact. Another thing to look at is whether the unit is thermostatically controlled. So can you set a thermostat and leave your house for the day and keep it warm? The Dickinson heater does not do that. It's, it's on or off. It's all manual. Um, I do believe that the Mini Franklin can be hooked up to a thermostat. It says that on this page. So, and back to the Williams. So now that I've found a heater that I think has the right power, the right BTU output, the right clearances for my tiny house, um, and has the right features, AKA can be um, run on a thermostat, what I will then do is I will actually look at the manual for that unit. And this is where things can get a little bit kind of gnarly, but you know, I'll click on the unit's manual link. It's usually linked right on the product page. And now I'll take a look at what kind of venting requirements there are. Um, and just like get an idea of what I'm going to have to put on the outside of my tiny house. Is this thing going to have to go through the roof? Is it, can it go through a wall? How can that be done? And so I just pulled open this manual and I think I actually just searched for the word vent. And then I found, you know, again, we got the clearances here. And I found this page, it's got a lot of diagrams, um, but you know, I would just read through these things. So clearance above grade. So, you know, it can't, it has to be 12 inches above a porch or a deck. Um, it needs to be 12 inches away from a window. And I'll just read through these to make sure nothing's jumping out on me. Um, you also might want to see if the unit is mobile home, uh, cleared to be in a mobile home. Um, because that will give you an idea if they've designed it to be in a moving house or not. And then the last thing I'll do from a venting perspective is I'll actually try to find pictures of an installed unit. And so um, for the Mini Franklin, for example, 
Um, I know that um, Gold Thread Tiny House oops, actually has one of these units installed. And so I was able to find this picture. And, and another thing that kind of drove me away from the Mini Franklin is this, this strange kind of vent stack that they require on the outside of the house. Um, it looks to be about three or four feet long. And that's just kind of, I don't know, I don't want to have extra stuff on the outside of my house that I don't have to. Um, whereas this Williams unit just uses a very simple um, kind of thimble cap on the outside um, as pictured here, um, which I think is, is, you know, a little bit more minimal and less, you know, just less noticeable. So to wrap things up, uh, when you're looking for heaters, you want to calculate your, how many BTUs you'll need. You want to stay away from direct vent heaters, direct vent, or, or sorry, um, vent free propane heaters. Um, you want to check out, um, how they look, what the clearances are, whether they can be run on the thermostat. And then you want to check out what kind of venting is required. So look up pictures, look at how it's going to have to go through the wall or ceiling of your tiny house and go from there. All right. Well, I hope this has been helpful. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any additional questions about tiny house heaters. Thanks. Did you enjoy this video? Make sure you check out my guide, Tiny House Decisions. It's got all of my best thinking in one place to help you go from just wanting a tiny house to actually having a tiny house. I go through all of the systems like heating, plumbing, electric, uh, I talk about tiny house design, how big it should be, should it be on wheels or not, and I even talk about specific construction techniques that I use to make my house a success. So Tiny House Decisions is the resource that you need to bring your tiny house dreams into reality. Uh, so that's at thetinyhouse.net slash tiny-house-decisions. Hope you enjoy.